Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CS Alta Science and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the double and the triple viking knit. Now if you're not familiar with viking knit I do recommend you check out the tutorial I have for the basic one, that way you'll easily be able to move on to the double and the triple one in this tutorial. So if you want to learn how to make them then keep watching. So the wire I'm going to be using is a regular round silver coated copper wire and it's a 0.4mm gauge and then we need a few tools. So first of all I got my flush cutter to cut the wire with, tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire, I recommend having an awl which is a tool with a pointed tip. This can help open up spaces that are a bit tight and make it easier to get a wire through. And of course we need a tool itself to make the viking knit on. And this is a homemade one and I already have a tutorial where I show you how you can make your own. And then we also need a draw plate for after we've made the viking knit, which in this case is a piece of plastic with different size holes in it, but you could also make your own. For instance by drilling different size holes into a piece of wood. But like usual I will leave links in the description box down below that might be helpful, otherwise let's get it all ready and let's get started. So let's start out with how to make the double viking knit. So first of all I'll cut off a length of my wire from the reel and this is whatever you're comfortable working with. I usually use about a wingspan so I have my wire ready and then I grab my tool and then we first of all need to attach the wire here to the tool so we got these little loops and what I'm going to do is take the very end of the wire and come through from the back on one of the loops and then out towards the front and I'm just going from left to right right now and then just bend that little tail down then I'm going to put my thumb on it just to hold it in place and we're now ready to start making our loops all the way around so we're creating that viking knit so I'm taking the long end here and bringing it over the top of the little tail towards the right and you can see we kind of created a little loop within the loop coming from the tool itself and then from here I'm grabbing the very end of the wire that we're working with and I want to then go over to the next loop in the tool in this case I'm coming down from the front towards the back end from right to left and then I want to make sure that the wire here goes over the top of itself so I can just grab it and then start to pull the wire all the way through and then when it's almost tight then I just want to put my thumb on the tool there to make sure the distance between these two loops that we're making they stay where we want them to and there you can see we have now another loop in the second loop in the tool and in between those two loops we created a little bridge so we need to keep doing this all the way around to the point where we started and we attach the wire and this is basically doing the same thing as just doing a basic viking knit that's how we're starting out if you're familiar with that i already have a tutorial on how to do that so again the next loop bring the wire through from front to back and right to left you can work in the opposite direction of course depending what's comfortable for you but it's the same basic principles just all opposite them kind of mirrored pull that tighter make sure we keep a somewhat even distance between the loops and you can see we created a another little bridge there, get to the end of the wire, repeat the very next loop in the tool, make sure it goes over the top of itself and pull it all the way through, create that little bridge and I'm just going to repeat with the remaining loops in the tool that we haven't used yet until I get back to the beginning. So now you can see I'm back to the beginning where I started out we have that little tail and we're just missing the last little bridge between these two loops here and what we're going to do is still the same thing as when we're just doing the basic viking knit. So I'm going to take the end of the wire here and instead of going through any loops what we need to do is this very first loop that we made when we started out we need to go behind it make sure we go above the bridge there so go behind the whole loop itself and then come out on the other side and then pull the wire all the way through and again as we pull it tight you can put your thumb on it if you need to and then this has created a new loop basically right below the first one so kind of starting a new row of loops you could say and we've also added in that final little bridge and this is what we then have to do from now on so at the beginning we went through the loops in the tool we don't need to worry about that now what we need to do repeatedly is go behind the loops in the knit itself so I'm going from the loop that I just made go to the next one make sure I go above the little bridges so go from one side to the other go completely behind the loop and then come out on the other side again above the bridge and then pull that tight but when I pull them tight I make sure that the new bridge that I'm creating is sitting nicely underneath because you don't want to pull it too tight we also want to try and make sure to keep a somewhat even distance between the bridges above each other there as we keep creating more now it doesn't have to be perfect just as even as you can the same thing as the distance between the loops so going to the next loop, I'm coming above the bridge there from right behind the loop and out above the bridge on the left and then pull that tight and you can see we we'll create a new bridge underneath the first one on the previous row and now I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around again until we meet back up to the beginning point and once I'm here this is where it's going to be a bit different than just the basic viking knit. So if we just want to continue with the single viking knit, that's the basic one, I would go behind the lowest loop making sure again I'm going above that lowest bridge as well but because this is a double one we now have 
two loops above each other here all the way around. So basically two rows of loops and bridges minus that last little gap here. But that bridge is gonna be created with this next movement. So for the double knit so far, we've made it the same way as the single knit. And the difference now is that instead of going behind the bottom loop, I'm gonna go up and go back behind the top loop again. So the very first one that we made. So I'm basically gonna count the bridges. I find that's the easiest way. So I'm gonna count one bridge, two bridges, so two bridges up and then go behind that loop, come out on the other side of it and pull that through. And this then creates that second bridge on the left side of it. And this is now gonna be how we're gonna continue. So that's the difference between the single knit and the double knit here. Again, on this next loop, I'm not gonna go behind the bottom loop. I'm gonna count the bridges. So one bridge at the bottom Bottom and the next bridge up and then go behind that specific loop which in this case is the top row but obviously it won't continue to be that so that's why I'm always counting the bridges from the bottom and then that creates a new bridge which now makes three on this section here and that's how we're going to keep growing the length and the next one I'm counting the bridges from the bottom one two and then go behind that loop and that creates the third bridge on the previous section there and the same thing in the next one and continue that all the way around so remember count those bridges from the very bottom and then make sure when you pull that tight that a new bridge is created at the very bottom of the ones that are already there and i'm now back to the point where i made my first loop you can see the difference is we have the two bridges on this next section but the one after that we have three so this is where i'm counting from the bottom one two bridges and then come behind that loop straight from one side to the next and now I can feel this is a little bit tight and that's because we have that tail laying behind it. So this is where the all comes in. So in that place where I wanna go behind, which is two bridges up, one, two, and then in between the second and third bridge, I'm just gonna put the all through the path where I want my wire to go. And that just opens up the space a bit more so we can easily now put the wire straight through there. And I find it's mostly where the tails are that you need to do that, where we then add in new wire along the way. But then otherwise, I'm pulling this tight. You can see that then creates the third bridge on that last little section. And then keep rotating your tool and just create these loops and bridges in the same way. So the main thing to remember is because this is the double knit, you just want to count the two bridges from the bottom one two and then go behind that next loop from one side to the next and remember to keep bringing the wire over the top of itself as we pull it through and you just want to keep going like this building a length of double viking knit so now i just want to show you how you can add a new wire because as you can see here i'm running out but i want to make the knit longer so what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to take my awl here and then the next loop that i'm going to go behind before i put the wire through i'm just going to go up from below and just kind of open up the spacing a little bit and then I take the little tail I've got left here and then I'd still count from the bottom so one two of the bridges and go through the side of that loop but instead of coming out on the other side of the loop what I'm going to do is actually bring it downwards so it comes out right underneath the loops at the bottom there then I just take my tweezers and pliers to grab the very end and help pull it through and that still creates that new bridge that we need and it kind of creates half of the new loop and then I just leave this tail here downwards and up against the mandrel so now now I want to cut a new length of wire that we then need to attach in the same place that we finished this one off. So on the left side here of the loop that we're working with, I'm going to count one, two, three bridges because that's the same loop that the other wire went behind when it then came straight down. And as you can see, this then comes out on the right side and it comes out above the second bridge from the bottom. So that is the right place. Now what we want to do is for this little tail to also come downwards. So what will help with that is again, if I take my all and then and on the right side of the loops, I'm gonna go up below the bridges and just basically open them up and kind of lift them away from the mandrel a bit so that when I bring the end of the wire here through, again, count three bridges on the left, one, two, three, go behind the loop, but now bring the wire downwards so it comes out again underneath the bridges and at the bottom of the loops there. Bring it through a little bit so it sits right next to the other one. Then I'm gonna again put my thumb on that, hold on to it, take the long end here bring that around towards the right so we continue the same direction that we're working in and you can see the effect already that this basically finishes off this new loop that we're making and then we just pick back up the knit in the same way so take the end of the wire that we're working with the long end here count the bridges on the next loop one two go behind that loop make sure you come out above the second bridge on the other side as well pull the wire all the way through and then i keep my thumb on those tails while i'm still pulling the wire through the first one here just to make sure we don't pull the wire all the way through but now 
we've basically attached a new length of wire and as you can see it's nice and seamless we just have the tails coming out of the bottom there which is going to end up being inside the knit and otherwise the loops just looks like the rest of them so it completely blends in we just continue then go behind the next loop make sure to count those bridges and then we have a whole new length of wire to make another section of the weave and this is basically how you add a new wire and you can make this however long you want to and next up is how to make the triple viking knit so again i've got my tool ready here and i have a length of wire cut ready first of all we need to attach it and this is just the same way so i'm coming up from behind just on one of the loops there in the tool and then bringing that tail downwards just hold on to it with your thumb and bring the long length of wire we're going to be working with around in this case I'm going towards the right you can work opposite whatever you're most comfortable with but it's the same basic technique and this is basically created the first loop and we've also attached the wire to the tool then I'm going to take the end of the wire we're working with and come down through the next loop and I'm going from right to left come out on the side there and make sure to bring the wire over the top of itself and I pull it all the way through and then we just want to pull it tighter and we want to make sure to try and keep an even distance between the loops here and then you can see we created a little bridge between the loops as well grab the end of the wire again go down through the next loop and pull that tighter as well and this is the same way that we started out with the double viking knit and also the single regular one so we're making these loops and kind of creating these little bridges all the way around till we get back to the start and now i'm back to the beginning where i have my tail coming down and we're just missing that last bridge which we're going to make with the next movement here so again just bring the wire around take the end and now instead of going down through a loop because that was when we were attaching the wire and starting out with the tool now what we need to do is come above this first little bridge that we made and then come straight behind the loop so put the wire straight through from one side to the other and then come out the other side and pull it through and then make sure that your wire comes above the tail as well so the wire gets hidden and make sure the wire goes above the little tail coming down as well so the tail gets hidden inside the viking knit and then as i'm pulling this tighter that as you can see creates the last little bridge and we've now also created the first loop on the second row we're going to make so we've done one full row of loops now we started out the second row and I'm just going to continue all the way around. So again, go above the little bridge, come straight behind that next loop here, pull out on the other side and pull the wire all the way through. So we now create a new bridge underneath the one above it. You can see we now have two little bridges there and repeat, come behind the next loop, pull it through and create that new little bridge and just keep doing this all the way around again. And then back to the beginning again, you can see where I have two bridges as opposed to this last one here, I've got one. Now what we need to do is start a new round. So this is going to finish off the second round of loops now starting a new round what i'm going to do is come above the bottom bridge there so basically in between the bottom and the top one and just behind that bottom loop and again pull this tight make sure it sits on top of the tail there and create that last bridge in this round so we have two all the way around now this is a point if we were doing the double viking knit we would then start with the actual movements that we need to make but because this is the triple one we just need to do basically one more round like this so again the next loop I need to go behind so I'm just coming up above the bottom bridge there behind the loop out the other side again above the bottom bridge so we end up making one more bridge there so we now have three above each other repeat with the next one go in between the bridges come out on the other side of the loop pull it through so we create that third bridge underneath the other ones and this is what we're going to do all the way around so we end up having three normal rounds of the viking knit here and i'm back at the beginning here so we need to finish off this round create the third bridge on this little section but in the process of doing that we also need to start this actual triple viking knit so instead of going behind the bottom loop there and just going above that bottom bridge like we've been doing now what we need to do is because we have the three bridges in place we can actually start it properly now so i'm going to take my end of the wire and go right back up to the very top loop here and then actually put my wire behind the very top loop. So I'm basically skipping over all three bridges there and going behind the top loop and pulling the wire all the way through and as I'm pulling that I make sure that the wire then forms another loop but it kind of lays around the other ones that we already made and we're now fully in place to just continue making the triple viking knit now so keep repeating this what we need to make sure of is that we count three bridges so the next loop I'm going to make here one two three bridges and go behind the loop after that third bridge and come straight out on the other side and when we tighten this make sure that the new bridge that's created is is the new bottom one so in this case here that's going to be the fourth one in this section and then bring the wire around you can see it kind of hugs the other loops there and get it ready for the next loop we need to come behind so again i'm counting my bridges one two three go behind the loop after the third bridge pull it tighter and create that new bridge below the other ones in this section and keep doing that all the way around 
So remember to count those bridges. And now we're back to the beginning. You can see I have the tail there. And it's just the same thing because now we have four bridges. I just want to show you. We still just count three from the bottom. So one, two, three bridges, which in this case means I'm coming between the top two. But obviously we will be getting more as we go further on. So just count three from the bottom. And I can feel right here that it's a little bit tough to get the wire through, which is where the awl comes in. Also because this is where the tail is, that's usually where it gets a bit trickier. It can be a little bit tighter because there's more wires there. So just put the awl through where you need to get the wire through more easily. And that will open it up nicely. Go straight behind that loop. Making sure we've counted the bridges. And then otherwise, tighten it in the same way. Making sure the new bridge here comes below the other ones. Bring it around to continue to create the next loop and again I'm going to count from the bottom one two three bridges come behind that loop and come out the other side and then pull that tighter as well creating a new bridge and this is in the pattern that we're going to keep doing so just keep going like this counting those bridges that's the most important thing now I just want to show you how to add a new wire to the triple knit here it's very much the same as the other ones but obviously we have a bit more wire to work with so I'm running out of wire to use what I then need to do is finish it off and then be able to add in the new wire so what I'm going to do is again we need to count one two three bridges in the next loop we're going to make but instead of going straight through to the other side like we do making the knit what I'm going to do is go behind the loop but then bring the wire downwards now you might find this to be a little bit tricky because we are going down behind quite a few wires so what I find to be helpful is taking the awl and then just putting it up and basically opening up the gap a bit more so we can feed the wire through more easily so again one two three bridges go kind of behind the loop but then straight downwards instead of out to the side and again I'm just going to grip it with my tweezers nose pliers and then pull it through and there we get one half of that loop and just bring the tail straight down the mandrel grab your new length of wire and we need to bring it through in the same place so in this case I'm taking the end and bringing it through from the left to right and we just need to count four bridges on this side because we just made that extra one so one two three four come through to the other side and it comes out there but instead of going straight through what we need to do is again have this come down so again same principle to help that I'm just using the awl coming up from below and just opening up the space between the wires and the mandrel so I can then again count one two three four just to make sure I'm going through in the right place and then bring it behind the loop but then downwards behind those bridges as well so it comes down right at the bottom of the loops and this just lays right next to the other one grab onto it with your thumb and then bring the wire around to finish off that loop and then we can just pick it right back up so moving on to the next loop here count one two three bridges go now straight behind the loop come out the other side push it through so again, we now create a new bridge underneath there. And that's basically now added in a new wire that we can keep working with and make a much longer piece of our Viking knit. And the tails here are just in between the Viking knit and the mandrel. So it's hidden away inside of it there. So just keep going around now with this length and you can keep attaching however many wires you need depending on the length that you need. So I now have both the double and the triple knit made here and I removed them from the mandrel. Now it's time to bring them through the draw plate so we can obviously get it to the size but also neaten up the knit itself and it's going to be the same thing with both of them that we're going to do so I'm just going to show you on the one the first thing we can do is remove the little tool that we made at the top there so just cut through the loops on the tool not in the knit itself cut through those loops all the way around and then we can just go in and remove it and then we have the knit itself now what I'm then going to do is cut off some more lengths of wire or you can use some scrap lengths if you have some lying around just about 15 centimeters or so and I'm going to be using three of them then with one at a time I want to take the end of it and go through the loops at the very top here so from the outside in towards the middle and then straight across the middle there to the one on the very opposite side so it's going straight across and then bring the wire to the midpoint then bend the ends upwards take another length we then need to go through the next loop here go straight across the middle and then through the very opposite one bring it to the midpoint again bring the ends up to join the others and then the last two loops we have left I'm going to use the last length bring it through the loop and through the one right opposite it and then bring them upwards as well so we now have all these extra wires coming out at the end and we're basically going to create a little handle here so I'm just going to grab onto the wires and then I'm holding my knit and just going to gently rotate the knit so I'm just twisting all the wires together just to make it a bit more secure to work with so just something like that then I'm going to grab my draw plate and first of all I like to basically find the hole in it 
that's pretty much the size of the knit. So I'm gonna bring it straight through there. So that went through pretty easily. I'm just gonna step down one. So the very next size, and then pull it all the way through. And again, you can then see I'm holding onto that little handle that I created. And this is also coming through pretty easily, but I like to always just go through each hole twice and then stepping down one. So go to the next size down. It's a little bit tighter, but still easy enough. Just bring it through again. Next one down, pull it through. And again, a little bit tighter, but still easy enough. And what you're gonna be able to see as we keep doing this, by stepping one hole down at a time, is that the knit itself is gonna get made smaller and also kind of tighter looking, but at the same time more neat. So if you're not quite happy with how the knit looks right off the mandrel, this is gonna help neaten it up and make it look much more final. And then I'm stepping down to the next size down. And you can see it's already starting to look quite different so we don't have these obvious bridges between the loops anymore. It's kind of pushed the loops closer together. And then it's really up to you where you want to stop. So you can stop where you still have it a decent size here, or you can keep going right down and make it very thin. Obviously that all depends on how you want your final look to be and what you're using it for. And by doing this, you also end up actually elongating the knit itself. So this is now longer than the original knit that I made. But again, that also all depends on how you want it to look. If you're gonna keep drawing this through, obviously making it thinner it's going to end up being longer but you don't have to worry about making the perfect size as you're making the knit and then not really knowing what size is going to end up as we're drawing it through the draw plate because i'd rather make it too long because you can always cut off the excess and get it to the exact size that you need so you would just take your curtains and cut straight through the knit and then just get rid of all these little bits of wires that will be there in the end otherwise you can easily then adjust the size that you need and this is then what it looks like now in this case here i took it to five millimeter so that's how wide it is in diameter and of course that's quite a bit smaller than what it originally was and you can see it's ended up being a lot tighter looking and also evened out quite nicely and you'll also find that it's less flexible because we've made the knit itself tighter so it still has some flexibility but less than originally and if I compare to the triple knit that's also drawn down to the same size just to compare you can see this one is even tighter and less flexible. So this is almost completely rigid, but you can have a little bit of movement and you could draw both of them smaller if you want it to as well. But this is just the size that I got them to, to compare. And then finally, just to compare to the original Viking knit, that's just a single one. This again has been drawn down to the same size and you can see how flexible this is in comparison. Now I've used all the same wire for all of them here and drawn them down to the same size. And you can then see the difference both in the flexibility like I've showed you, but also just in how they look. So really whatever you use all depends on what you prefer and also what you want to use them for and of course I do have a separate tutorial for the original Viking knit this one was specifically to show the double and the triple one and I've also made some in copper so you can see the difference in how they look this is also a triple one compared to the silver triple one this one I didn't draw down quite as far in the size so you can see again the difference so as I said you can easily stop at any point when you like the way it looks so this is a wider one and equally you can make them thinner as well so you can you can see this is almost a bit more like a chain style so it's more rigid because obviously it's tighter this is a double one but it has kind of a chain feel so you can really make some lovely jewelry with these knits here so that is how you make the double and triple viking knit it's just a little bit different than the original single one but very much the same basic technique and don't forget if you don't have a lazy daisy you can always make your own tool which i have a tutorial on how to do as well and if you follow my channel you'll also be able to find tutorials for designs you can make with these viking knits otherwise i really hope you enjoyed this one thank you so much for watching it and i'll see you in the next one